ruling that O.J. Small was down. Mm. Well, you called it an excellent catch by O.J. Small. This is just like the little bubble screen. He extends out, makes the catch, and then reach that ball forward for the first down. Now, was his knee down or any other part before the ball came out? Yes, knee was down, then the ball came out. Good call by the official. First down, Gators. High formation, the clock with 531 to go in this one. Well, that was a huge conversion because the clock kept going. O.J. Small stayed in bounds. And we're moving down to the five-minute mark now. And off Faison. Cuts back. Nice run. Another Florida first down. And Florida's doing this on the ground with Rand Carthen on the bench. And Deshaun Wynn on the bench with a neck injury. So this is their number three running back. And he did a nice job of turning it up inside behind Randy Hand, his right tackle, Lance Butler, the right guard. There's the, the first two tailbacks for the Florida Gators. Another first and ten with 450 remaining in regulation play. 19 to 7. And here's Lee letting the clock get down to one. Facing. Down to the 32 yard line. Well, this is the first time we mentioned that LSU had gotten off to a 5 0 start. Last time was in 73. Go to the top of the screen, 58 and 59. Undefeated in 58, it was the Billy Cannon year in 1959. Then 69, they finished 9 and 1, 72, 9 2 and 1, and 73. They lost their final three games. Second and three, time has been called. We'll be right back. All right, Tim, thank you. 19 to 7, Florida, trying to go four and three for the season and erase the memories of a stinging loss at home last week. This will help. Yeah. Oh, boy, you're not kidding. And you know, it's interesting. They've lost two games at home this year. They lost to Tennessee in a game that they really played well for a good part of the game and, you know, gave up the Hail Mary at the end of the first half. And they lost last week to Ole Miss. And a lot of people said, now it's going to get really tough. They go on the road to LSU, they go to Arkansas next week. Here's Payson. But sometimes it's better to go on the road. And I think for this Florida team, it was good to go on the road to get away from the distractions and the disgruntled fans, circle the wagons, and play your best football game of the year. Well, there were 92,000 here. A lot of empty seats now as uh, Florida facing a third and two. They have converted seven of 15 on third down today. Here's a play fake. Lee pulls up. Smart decision. Wasn't going to make it, and he made a smart decision to just go down. Under four to go. There's the athletic director at the University of Florida on the right, Jeremy Foley. And he's felt uh, some of that noise in the system down in Gainesville in last week. It was Jeremy Foley's decision as AD to hire Ron Zook to replace Steve Spurrier. Well, the unusual thing is he's on the LSU side of the field, but I think I got it figured out. I think he wants to be in position to make a direct beeline sprint to Ron Zook if they, in fact, hold on and win this game. See, Jeremy is on this side, the LSU side, and he knows Ron Zook's going to come to midfield to meet Nick Saban, and Jeremy's thinking, well, I can, I can come from over right. here, and I can meet him right there, right about the Tiger Eye, because Ron will be coming here and... Cut him off at the pass. Yeah. Because yeah. they will both be two happy men if the Gators do, in fact, hold on and win this one. You know, speaking of Jeremy Foley, Ted Danson and Becker is coming up later this week. Fourth and eight. Delay of game. The Tigers, by the way, have used all of their timeouts. Talked to him before the game. I said, what the, the short hair? He said, it's the summer cut. 
summer a lot longer in Gainesville than it is in Canton, Ohio. I can guarantee you that. 19 to 7. And they come after Wilbur. He punts it away deep. Almost knocked out. And we a touchback and come out to the 20 yard line. Demetrius Webb was down there. You know, I, it's hard for me to watch Craig T. Nelson in a serious role like that because every time I see him, I remember Coach. Right. You know? I mean, and he was, you know, such a different character in that show. And now he's a tough guy. Right. Minnesota State head football coach. Yes, he was. Across the middle behind Debbie Henderson, incomplete. Now, well, Matt Moss. Mom and Dad are down here from. Uh, Jasper, Indiana, his hometown. They made the trip down to watch. A little disappointed, I'm sure. Second down. The way things have gone for LSU and Matt Mock. Second and ten. Mock out of the shotgun. Right side, Michael Clayton spins, tries to get out of bounds, and does in front of Q1 Ratliff. See, that's the kind of throw that I'm surprised that we didn't see more of earlier in the game. Whenever they would give him a cushion to just the quick throw, because you know you need those little easy completions as a quarterback, particularly if you're struggling. And Matt Mock has struggled today. 18 of 30, two interceptions. On third down, third and three. Here's Mock. He goes deep for Clayton and overthrows him. It'll be fourth down. Yeah, Nick Saban, this is going to be a tough one. But he was concerned about it. I, I'm genuinely concerned that uh, the week off, they won big against Georgia here. He said uh, to us the other day, he said Florida is a very good team. He says this is the most important game of the year. Of course, next week will be the most important yeah. game at that point. Well, he tried to sell that to his team, that it's still the Gators. They still have talent, talent enough to beat them. Here's Mark taking off, and he's got the first down at the 33-yard line. With 2.55 to go, they'll stop the clock while they reset the first down chain. And the LSU is out of timeouts. And they've really got to go now. I mean, they've got to score two touchdowns, and they've got to do it quickly. Mock will take the snap from Wilkerson. Three rush, eight drop. Watch out from the backside. Bobby McRae almost got his fourth sack. And Matt Mock calling for a penalty, but no penalty deserved there. I mean, Bobby McRae has had an outstanding football game for the Florida Gators. He has played hard. He's a fifth-year senior out of Miami Homestead High School. I think he's played outstanding. I think Channing Crowder, who we weren't even sure we were going to see, has played outstanding. Kiwan Ratliff has had a big game. Daryl Dixon, a nice football game. That pass complete right side. A flag is thrown on the line of scrimmage way over in front of the Florida bench. That is the 12th LSU penalty today. Ron Zook graduated from Miami, Ohio, 76. Nick Saban graduated from Kent State in 72. 31 years ago, those two teams actually played each other. Zook was a freshman, so didn't play, but Nick Saban was a defensive back in a game that was uh, captured 31 years ago by Miami, Ohio, 21-10. Here's Mark going deep. Down the middle for Henderson. Got it. Then a fumble. And there's a scramble for it. Picked up. Keywan Ratliff, I think. Yes. Dixon. Is it Dixon back? Yep. Daryl Dixon. I mean, it went through about eight players. And Daryl Dixon was the last guy to corral it.
This may have been Matt Mock's best throw of the day. It's a vertical route by the inside receiver, well thrown to Henderson, and Johnny Lamar stripped the ball out from behind, and then watch this, about eight guys go after the, uh, the slippery football, and Daryl Dixon is the guy who secures it. How many turnovers is that now for LSU? Three, two interceptions and a fumble recovery. And only one Florida turnover in the ball game. The Tigers cannot stop the clock, so Faison will keep it on the ground and watch out. Here goes Seattle Faison. He's going to be caught from behind by Corey Webster, but he ripped off a huge run. See, when you gang up on the line of scrimmage because you're trying to get to the football and, you have, and you're in a desperate situation, if you get through the initial line, look, everybody's banked in there. So if you get through the initial line, there's no other defenders. How about the job of Corey Webster yeah. tracking him down? Saved a touchdown that would have added insult to injury here. Had to go a long way. That's a 63-yard run for Faison. I don't know if this is appropriate or not, but it's starting to rain here, too, in Baton Rouge. Mm. So with the rain coming down, 150 to go. I think the alligators maybe like water more than tigers. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, we were talking about that Miami of Ohio Kent State game in 1972. Here are the two players, Zook at Miami, a defensive back 72 75, and Saban at Kent State. And uh, they look uh, a little more mature now. But you were talking to Nick about that game. He remembered it well. Yeah, he did. I mean, uh, they won. Uh, Kent State went on to win the MAC championship that year and said it. A critical point in the game. Uh, Miami had the ball first and goal inside the second one. Three straight times they tried to go over the top to score. And uh, a guy by the name of Jack Lambert made three tackles in a row to stop the touchdown. And uh, Kent State eventually went on to win. Final minute, second and four. As the rain comes down. Yeah. Florida wins it. They're going to win it 19 to 7. Nick Saban's concerns come true. Next week, we're going to Fayetteville. Good. I mean, I, I've never been there. I'm looking forward to go there to see a game. It's a great setting. Donald Reynolds Stadium right in the middle of the campus in Fayetteville. And we'll be there next Saturday afternoon. 19 to 7, final 24 seconds to go. What a win by Florida Gators. I, this is impressive. Very, very impressive. Ron Zook has kept this team together. They had a great plan. Chris Leak played an outstanding football game. Not so sure I approve of this. The Florida Gators stomping on the Tiger uh, emblem in the center of the field. A little disrespectful, but other than that, a great win for the Florida Gators. And Chris Leak in his third start, 18 of 30 for 228 yards, two touchdowns, no turnovers for Chris Leak. And it's time now for the Wrangler play of the game. It came with a score 12 to 10 to 7. And here's Mick Hubert. Peters 5 for 11 on third downs. Leak in the shotgun. Drops back, look, looking, looking, throws over the middle of the field. He's got facing at the 20, at the 15, at the 10. He breaks a tackle. He's down in. Touchdown! Oh, my! Seattrick Faison with a beautiful run after the catch. That one sealed things. And the final score, 19-7. to Florida won it. And our player of the game, the freshman from Charlotte, North Carolina, Chris Leak, 18-30, 228. Two touchdowns, no interceptions. And let's go down to uh, Jill Arrington, who's with Ron Zook. Coach Zook, you've got to tell me, what do you think about the play of your true freshman quarterback, Chris Lee? Well, he's, he's getting better every game, and uh, obviously that's what he has to do. Uh, I'm, I'm proud of this whole football team. I'm proud of Chris. I'm proud of all these freshmen. Uh, we got a lot of ball to play. As we told him last week, we just got to keep playing. And, uh, and we got to get, you know, once, once again, next week's another tough game. We just got to be ready to go. 
Congratulations on a great win, Kiwan Ratliff. What were the seniors, what were you saying to this team, and how important was this win to help you through the rest of your season? I mean, we noticed that, that this is a long season, and we know that two losses doesn't mean our season is over with. So we knew if we rallied the younger guys and stepped up as seniors and got them to play on the level that we should be playing on every game, that we could still make it back to the Atlanta. All right, well, congratulations on a great win. Back to you guys. All right, Jill, thank you. 19 to 7, Florida goes to 4 and 3, and they go to Arkansas, and so do we. LSU goes to 5 and 1. They're on the road at South Carolina next week, and then they've got a big game at home, really big, against Auburn. For Jill Arrington and Todd Blackledge, I'm Vern Lundquist saying goodbye from Death Valley in Baton Rouge. See you next week from Fayetteville.